The greatest loss of crop in Kenya is experienced during harvesting. Up to 60% of the crop can be damaged when the process is done manually. In order to avoid this, Williams explains that his organization uses a potato bank harvester to yield their crops from the farm. He says the harvester consumes less time to harvest as well as reduces potato loss to near zero as it runs at a certain depth just below the crop picking the potatoes and soil onto specially coated rollers and chains. The reason why we've gone for this, uh, this, this equipment is we want to do quite a number of, of hectares. Um, this year we did 57 hectares and, and uh, next season we're going to go up to 80 hectares. Um, we want to, uh, th on this farm, uh, go up to about 125 hectares. Uh, the um, capacity issue for us is the storage facility. We need to make sure that we don't overfill our store. We need to have enough storage to, to store our, uh, our, our potatoes. Our store has a capacity of 3,500 tons and um, uh, with the yields we're getting uh, with, with uh, 80 hectares we will be using our, our store to, to the full capacity. Yeah. So, um, but because you're doing such a, uh, such a large uh, amount of, of hectares, you need to have the capacity so you can plant enough in time. So you don't spend too much time planting, you can get it done in time with the rains. Uh, you can harvest in time, you can uh, um, uh, do all your sprays and everything in time. That's why we've, we've really invested in, in mechanization. So this is a bunker harvester. Um, you get two, two types of harvesters. You get uh, windrow harvesters and uh, bunker harvesters. The bunker harvester is, uh, is a harvester which, when, after harvesting, stores potatoes in a bunker before it then offloads into a trailer. A uh, windrow harvester, it takes it out and then either has to deposit it on the ground at the back or directly fills it into trailers. Um, we invested in this machine because we want to do quite a few hectares every year and for us to be efficient and, and looking at a capacity and the distance to the store from the fields, we chose to go for a bunker harvester. It's the most efficient uh, setup for us. Soil and crop are transferred onto a series of webs the loose soil is usually sieved out, leaving the potatoes, which are usually moved to one area of the harvester, before it is tipped onto a trailer and transported to the store. You see the two rollers? These rollers go over the two ridges for potatoes. And there's a blade underneath that go, cut underneath the potatoes, and the potatoes get taken onto this, this web. This web feeds the potatoes up to the top, and all the excess soil and, uh, and things fall in between the web <clears throat> onto the, onto, back onto the floor of the field, on, onto the farm. And then the potatoes end up at the back at a roller, which then go over a table. We have six ladies on top of the harvester who do a pre-selection. They take out any clots, any cut potatoes, any bad potatoes. Uh, and then those potatoes end up in the bunker. We have two big tipping trailers that come through and the potatoes then get tipped into the trailers. There's a mattress on the bottom of the trailer to, to soften the fall of the potatoes so they get less damage. Um, and then the trailer uh, goes on to the field. Now these machines are um, quite an investment but they're designed to be, try and be as gentle with the potatoes as possible. The potato is a living it's a living, uh, a living thing. It's eyes, it gets bruised. So you have to be very careful with it um, as it goes to the store so that you don't cause any unnecessary damage. So the, the bunker um, holds uh, roughly six ton. So uh, our trailers are 13 ton units. So we, we do two bunkers, uh, which is 12 tons before it goes into, into the store. At the moment, with the way that we are working, we do an average of two hectares a day. If we have longer lines and, and, uh, and the weather is good, then we might be able to do two and a half to three. But on an average day, we do two, two hectares a day.
Farm machineries are always a big investment made by the farmer. So equipment like this is, is very ex expensive equipment. Um, you know, so you need to really look after it. Uh, basically on, on a daily basis we give the, the machine a good clean at the end of the day. Um, just to get all the, 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 the weeds out, the grass out, the, uh, anything that's stuck in the machine. We give it a good look over. Um, and then once a week uh, we do a, a proper maintenance. So we grease all the greasing points, we check all the bearings, uh, we check the belts so that everything is good. So, you know, good maintenance will allow us to, to carry on. It's a very basic machine, so a lot of the bearings, the bearings do go, they are available in Kenya uh, because they're standard sizes. And um, it's, it's very simple, so there's only a few things that are, are, are technical, like the computer. Um, but they are, you know, they are very good quality. It's very seldom that anything would go wrong. And if there is, there's a support team uh, that we're in contact with, with the Wolf, and, uh, and they're very helpful. So if we do need a new sensor or things, they send it in and it's a couple of days and we have it, have it going. One unique feature about the Banker Harvester is that it is fully operated on GPS and a start-stop system. Throughout the season, everything is run on GPS, from planting to, um, to cultivation, to spraying, everything runs on GPS. Uh, this unit is pulled by a tractor, a big John Deere we have in front. It's a 170 horsepower tractor. Uh, it's got a, a, a Trimble GPS unit on top. Uh, with that, the operator at the beginning of the field, he can set his course, and then the GPS will just take the tractor straight across the field to the other end. Uh, this allows the driver to be able to turn and to to manage the machine. This machine, there's a lot of things happening. <clears throat> the, the bunker needs to be in line. The, sorry, the, 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 cult, the lifter needs to be in line. Uh, the bunker needs to be filled in the right way. There's uh, the rear wheels of the machine, they, they steer. So uh, the driver has got his hands full operating the machine as it goes down the field. The harvester can gather up to six tons of potatoes in one harvest. So the, the bunker, um, holds uh, roughly six ton, so uh, our trailers are 13 ton units. So we, we do two bunkers, uh, which is 12 tons before it goes into, into the store. This kind of harvesting is the best as it creates a nice flat seedbed for a farmer to plant another crop without the need for any further mechanical land preparation. After the potatoes are harvested, they are usually transferred to a sorting table back at the store where sorting and grading is done. Um, as you could see in the field, the potatoes get put in the trailer. Um, the trailer then comes with, with uh, roughly 12 tons of potatoes. They, they come through via the road, they come over here to the receiving hopper. Uh, this is a, a hopper that roughly takes uh, most of the trailer. Uh, there's a belt in the bottom of the hopper which then pushes the potatoes up to, to carry on over the rest of the machine. This is where we do our, our grading of our, of our potatoes and uh, from here then we can really separate uh, the different sizes uh, to get the seed sizes out, the wear size out before it ends up going into the storage facility for, for cooling. From the receiving hopper it goes on to uh, a roller set where there's a lot of rollers, the potatoes go over it. So any soil that comes in with the trailers goes through the rollers and ends up on, a, on, a, on, on this trailer, which is a soil trailer. Um, and that takes out most of the clots, most of the very, very small chits um, and, and most of the weeds. Then it goes over a table. There's six ladies on the table, uh, six or eight label, uh, ladies. And then uh, they take out any remaining clots or any b remaining bad potatoes and so on. And that's uh, just to double check that the potatoes that go into the store are good potatoes and that there's not a lot of extra fuel rubbish that is coming with it. And that's just before it gets graded over the web grader and there it gets separated to the boxes. And then from the boxes it gets taken to a drywall there. So we ventilate it first for two days to make sure that enough air goes past the potatoes. Any cut potatoes will get a bit of wound healing 
uh, and then up to the, two days in front of the drywall, it goes into the storage facility. We, we have a lot of potatoes that we need to go through, so we need to have the right equipment to do it. Uh, what we have here is, is uh, the same as what you'd find in, uh, in Europe at any, uh, let's say, a Dutch potato farmer. We'll have a similar sort of setup, um, same store and, and storage facilities. Uh, this, for example, is a, is a box filler. It's an automatic unit. It automatically fills the boxes. Uh, the importance for, for this is uh, that we make sure that we fill the boxes in the right way. Uh, we don't have any contamination of people touching too many potatoes. Um, if there's any bad potatoes in there, then it's, it, it can be detected. Um, and it really fills uh, the box evenly. Um, and that really helps further in the storage facility because if there's a box which is not completely full or not full in the right way, then our ventilation system in the store doesn't work. So from the hopper to the grading line to, to the box filler, uh, it's also all designed to, to work, to be very gentle on the potatoes. Before placing the potatoes into the storage facilities, farmers are usually advised to cure their tubers. They do so by reducing the temperatures up to between 45 to 60 degrees Fahrenheit and high relative humidity of between 85 to 95% for two weeks. We have them in front of the drywall for two days. Uh, you know, when the potatoes come in, they come, they've been very warm, they need to cool down a bit, but not too much. The um, machine brings a lot of cool air over it. Uh, with potatoes of stress, they always release a little bit of moisture. That air will dry off the moisture, so it doesn't allow bacteria to go in. And then um, once it's dried, it then goes into the store, which has a similar concept. Only there we slowly reduce the temperature of the, uh, of the room uh, by half a degree a day so that it lulls the potato to sleep to, to keep the quality high. The potato tuber has a three months dormancy. Thus William reveals that they only store their potatoes up to three months. So after a storage of roughly three months, we take them out of the store, we warm them up, we put them over the line again where it gets separated into the two different seed sizes and then the two seed sizes then get um, packed and, and, uh, and delivered to, to farmers once it's been certified by Kefis. The biggest disadvantage of mechanized farming, as we were informed by the farm manager, is the lack of spare parts. Mechanized farming is that most of it is the machines are produced in Europe or any overseas. Uh, if there is a, a problem, um, you quite, have to, quite often have to wait for spare parts. After being stored for three months or less, William reveals that they again grade and sort the potatoes before being taken to the market. This is a box tipper. This tips the box onto, onto its side where the potatoes come off. They get over a table. We have a few people on this little table here to check and inspect the potatoes so that the quality is right. And then it goes into the bagging machine. And then from there, the wet potatoes go into 50 kilo bags, so they get put in onto 50 kilo system, and the seed is in 20 kilo bags. And then from there, we load on pallets, and the, the, then we can load the trucks. Mechanization goes hand in hand with training of farmers, especially on the right handling and maintenance of machinery. We spoke to some of the drivers who have been trained to operate some of the machines used on this farm, and this is what they had to say. Hapa tuko na variety ya matinga ambazo ni mbali mbali tuko na Massefaction, tuko na John Deere, tuko na Vatra na sote ndizo tunafanya nazo kasi hapa. Ah uh, John Deere kubwa ndio ina natumiwa kwa harvesting kwa sababu hiyo mashini ni kubwa. Alafu Vatra nayo tunatumia kwa panda na na, na kupiga ndawa. This is massive functions, and also this transport. Because if you travel and you go to in a bit ten tons, you are talking about going to Kamai. Massive function, yes. Focal lift me up to go and see it. For example, we have this. I like to na work with a motor machine, to go to box, to na work in this type of machine. If you jump to box, you na to attend na, to na this type of store done. Hapa tukona grading machine. 
kuna wengine wako kwa harvest au wako kwa shamba au ni wana grade viazi kutoka kwa shamba wanaingia kwa grading machine ndio tuweze kupakia customers And that's all we had time for on Mega Farms today. Join us again next time as we feature more informative stories only on Mega Farms.